how can communities how can neighbors um, I have a group home in my neighborhood mm -hmm. I, I play on the basketball courts with with the child or child and adult with how can we as communities see um, I don't want to say I, I want to move from supporting to um, being supported by in mm -hmm. a sense to how, how do we benefit from people who are disabled that is a great question because I think well, I started a program called the Youth Legacy Foundation, mm -hmm. which is about promoting more awareness that youth with disabilities and as people with disabilities in general have a lot to offer. Mm -hmm. So there's this, we're trying to change kind of this paradigm of thinking mm -hmm. where we're always expecting people with disabilities to be on the receiving end. Right. But they contribute a lot. And I think there's just not a lot of recognition of that. And we want to empower and support our friends who have disabilities to give as much as they can. What, what, kind what of, can they give? What do they give? I mean, give me some examples. What have you seen your daughter or some of the people you've worked with or some of the, the, uh, the youth leadership uh, group? What, what are they offering? Well, I have a friend who is blind who works for the Department of Homeland Security. Hmm. She's helping the country. She's not watching <laughs> us. So there, if we're all paranoid, at least she, she might be listening to us or whatever I'm teasing. But. Well, and I have um, a friend who is in a wheelchair mm -hmm. um, full-time or uses a wheelchair full-time. We don't say confined to a wheelchair, wheelchair-bound, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. um, we're trying to change language. Yes. I think the language is very powerful. Oh, she works full-time. She's a mom. She has two beautiful boys. Mm. Um, she's worked on political, congressional com political campaigns. Mm -hmm. um, I have, um, well, I look at my daughter who wants to go to college mm -hmm. and, and work with animals. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I could see her making animal activism her career, mm -hmm. you know, and... I mean, it's just, I think you have to get to know the person, yeah. and that's what we're trying like, to do. Like anyone. So each one has something. Mm -hmm. to offer. I think of this kid, this young man that I play basketball with. Mm -hmm. What he uh, He's a leader that is leading people, children, in fact, and teens, no less. Yes. Um, although he's clearly got um, uh, physical and neurological disabilities. But he's leading them in, by simply being very enthusiastic and being very inclusive of all things. He's getting teenagers to play basketball with him. Yeah. That's huge. Well, and I think that um, I saw something on Facebook the other day that there are a lot of, th it was a list of things that cannot be measured by a test. Mm -hmm. Enthusiasm, creativity, compassion, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. there's so many things. And I went to talk to a group of third graders at Loring Community School through a program or an initiative called 100 Strong Who Care. Mm -hmm. That's something I'm doing with the Youth Legacy Foundation. I talked to the kids about how everyone has a gift. Mm -hmm. Everyone has many gifts, mm -hmm. and we should look for the gifts in each person rather than a mm -hmm. label, their mm -hmm. skin color, their gender, mm -hmm. their disability, or whatever, their socioeconomic, if they're poor or not. Right. And I want to add what, I've, what I always say to you when, when we talk about disability, and I just feel so strongly about, is we all also have disabilities. And we, we do, right? Yes. So we some all of have us have a disability of, with math, or some of us have a disability to be empathetic, or some of us have a disability with alcohol, or some mm -hmm. of us have a disability with um, reading, or some of us has, have a disability with um, uh, relating to other people in kind ways. There's, there's all kinds yes. of disabilities that are hidden. Some of us have real uh, quantified patholog pathological disabilities that we maybe don't see. Our disability um, might be um, that uh, we've got some severe illness and we, we look like we're fine, but we're actually not so much, and so mm -hmm. we can't do certain things, right? Um, so I just want to acknowledge that it's not the disabled that we identify as disabled aren't the only ones who are disabled. We have to, my view, is we have to own the fact that we have our own deficits and disabilities as well. Yes, um, everyone is on a spectrum, and there are a lot of hidden disabilities, mm -hmm. and there are a lot of advantages of certain disabilities. Mm -hmm. We sometimes talk about the autism advantage. Right. Look at Temple Grandin. Right, right, her right. Autism, I her autism. I love her. I mean, well, who I had, I, had She's to, great. I got, I got to meet her, mm -hmm. and she is, you know, she's kind of quirky. Um, she has autism, and she's mm -hmm. not afraid. She's proud of it. Look at what she has done with her autistic thinking. And you were talking about Einstein before we started taping. You, I don't, you were saying something about hair, and your hair does not look oh. Einsteinish. Mine <laughs> might get close sometimes. But the point, I mean, here's Einstein, I think, would now be, um, he'd have numerous uh, disabilities if he were diagnosed in living these days, and yet he's a pretty smart guy. Martin Luther King Jr. Right. had a disability, right. de major depression. Right. Lincoln. Yep. Yeah. So Ooh, I think right. it's we are just not aware of right. 
and when we're emphasizing the contributions and talents of people, mm -hmm. we're, you know, that's our focus. Right. We should be more focused on people's abilities right. and what they right. can do.